Hello and welcome to the 13th in a series of films about the standard level organic topic. Um, if you've been working your way all the way through this then you might be happy to know that we're coming into the home straight now. We've looked at all the reactions of alkanes and alkenes and those of alcohols. We're now going to start looking at molecules called halogenoalkanes and we're going to then in the next couple of films see how they react with things. So hopefully by the end of this film you'll know how to spot a molecule that contains a halide functional group and you will also know how to name halogenoalkanes and how to spot the different kinds. So just like there were different kinds of alcohols we'll see that there are some different kinds of halogenoalkanes. Now halogenoalkanes are also called alkyl halides sometimes and I suppose pretty much what we're looking for is for the molecule to have a halogen in it. Okay, So if we look at this molecule here, this purple blob is supposed to represent an iodine atom. Okay, so Maybe if I just put I in here, that will just make it a bit clearer. So that's an iodine atom, and because iodine's in group 7, it's a halogen, so this would be called an alkyl halide. Okay, This molecule here has fluorine in it, in fact it's got four fluorines in it, Okay, but it wouldn't be considered an alkyl halide, even though it's got a halogen in it, because it's got a double bond. Okay, so because this molecule is not essentially an alkane with some halogens attached, we wouldn't call it a halogenoalkane or an alkyl halide. But this molecule here we would, because this is very much just like propane, but it's got a bromine attached. Okay, so kind of two things we're looking for there. It has to look like an alkane in that it's saturated, but it also has to have a halogen atom attached to make it an alkyl halide. Now as far as naming them goes, well you name them very much like the alkane that they are, except that you mention that there is a halogen attached to them. Okay, so if we've got one carbon atom like here, and we've got four bonds to a carbon, doesn't matter which of these three I make hydrogens, but if one of them is a bromine, then this is basically methane, but it's got bromine attached, so it's bromomethane. Right? If I had two carbon atoms, it would essentially be ethane. And if I attached a chlorine to that somewhere, it doesn't matter where, because they're all equivalent positions, I'd call it chloroethane. Just like I'd call this last one here fluoropropane, because it's got three carbons. However, you might have spotted with that last one, or you might have been thinking to yourself, fluoropropane, but I can vary where I put the fluorine there. And just like with the alcohols and the branched alkanes and the alkenes to some extent, we have to say where the halogen is attached in a halogenoalkane. Okay? So this molecule here, with its four carbon atoms, is called butane, but it's got a bromine attached to it, and the bromine is on the end carbon. Okay, I haven't even drawn bonds for all the hydrogens here, which is very lazy of me. Okay, but imagine all the other spaces are hydrogens. Okay, and because it's on the first carbon, so this is the first carbon in the chain, you could also say it's the fourth, but remember we use the lowest number possible. We call it 1-bromobutane. Okay, if we were to put the bromine atom on the second carbon along, then I'd be talking about this molecule here, and that would be 2-bromobutane. And notice that there wouldn't be a 3-bromobutane. Remember, I'm counting from this end, which might seem a little bit odd. But um, there wouldn't be a 3-bromobutane because the second carbon along is also the third, if you're counting from the other end. So it doesn't matter which of these two positions you put your bromine in, it will always be 2-bromobutane. And then finally, we've got this last molecule here, which is called 2-bromomethylpropane. Well, remember... If you've got methyl propane, you've got propane, a three carbon chain, there's only one place on this chain you can put your methyl group, because if you put it on one of the other two carbons, you'd be extending the chain, you'd be making it into butane. And now we've got a bromine on the second carbon, okay, in the chain. And it doesn't matter where I start counting from, I'll always find that this is the second carbon. I could also have one bromo methyl propane, but that would have my bromine on the end somewhere. Okay? And it doesn't matter whether it would be on there or on there, it would always be one bromo methyl propane. Okay, so now that we've covered what um, their naming system involves and 
what atoms we've got to have in a molecule for it to be a halogenoalkane. Now we can look at the different kinds, and once again we can see that we're talking about primary, secondary, and tertiary ones. And just like with the alcohols, if we consider the halide functional group, so if I just call it, call my halogen atom X, then what we're looking for when we're deciding if it's primary, secondary, or tertiary is how many carbons are directly attached to the, al uh, to the halide carbon. All right. So if I had zero or one carbons directly attached to this carbon, like with bromomethane here, which has just got hydrogens in all these positions, then it's primary. Just like if this had been an OH, that would be a primary alcohol. Okay, for a secondary alcohol like this one here, so remember the bracket means it's coming off this carbon. Okay, right, before we then move along the chain to this final carbon. This one's secondary because this carbon here with the bromine attached has also got a CH3 this side and a CH3 that side and an H here. So it's secondary because it's got two carbons directly attached to the alkyl carbon. And finally, we've got a tertiary one here. And guess what? That's got three carbons attached to the alkyl carbon. But I'm kind of skimming over this a little bit because we've done it in the alcohols film. So hopefully you've, you've seen that film. OK, so that's the end of that. Um, the next couple of films actually go into something quite in-depth, I suppose, really, for a standard level topic. So we're going to look at what halogenoalkanes react with, but more importantly, how they do that in reaction mechanisms. So before you move on, check that you're happy that you understand what we mean by an alcohol halide or a halogenoalkane, and you know how to name them and spot different kinds, because these different kinds will take part in different mechanisms, unfortunately. Okay, and if there's anything there that you didn't understand or you wanted to ask questions or make comments about, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on the YouTube channel.